if you think you're not gonna have a setback on this journey, then you just have not been doing this long enough. And in fact, some of you are probably watching this and thinking, well, shit, I just ate a four for four from Wendy's last night. Here are my eight best tips I can give you for overcoming setbacks. What's up, y'all? I just finished up one of my coaching vids. You guys should have just seen a little quick clip of that. If you're interested in coaching, go to dirtjamon.com. We can get on a call and personally talk about your goals. You guys already knew all of that though. So it is 150. It's going to be 2.30 when we start working out. I'm gonna hit a back workout with my boy Evan. I'm gonna see you in the car on the way there. And then it's just a great day to have a great day. I guess this is a little behind the scenes. So we got the computer, teleprompter, we got the lighting, we got the whiteboard, the credentials, the red mysterious lighting, all that jazz. I'm excited to put y'all through this workout. Let's get after it. Hopefully y'all can see me good. It looks good from my angle, so I guess we'll see when I watch it back. Shout out Tucson for being the driest city ever. If you love chapped lips, you'll love Tucson. This is something that's completely out of the ordinary. I actually went out for like the first time, or I guess technically second time this semester. I haven't went out in a very long time. I went to the bars with some of my friends because I just wanted to see them and that's what they were doing, so I came with. And I'm not even kidding, I almost got into a 40 versus five brawl just because of how fragile the male ego really is. To set the scene for you, I'm walking with six of my friends. Three of my friends have a little bit of an ego. I love these kids, but we were walking outside of my frat house and then we were walking towards the bars, right? A different frat just got done with some dance competition, I believe. And the thing is, is when groups of guys walk by each other, the guys are gonna know what I'm talking about, which is like 85% of my audience. So you guys are gonna know what I'm talking about. It's kind of like you have this little awkward, there's a, there's a little bit of animosity towards each other. I don't know what it is. You can just kind of feel a little bit of tension when you're looking over at another group that's walking on the other side of the street. We're looking at each other, looking back, and for some reason, the kid behind me, one of my friends, he got, he got a little bit of ego on him. I love the kid to death, but he's got a little bit of an ego, and so he's like pretty hard staring at one of the other kids across the street, and to make a long story shorter, kid calls him a pussy. He stands on business, I guess. My friend walks into the middle of the street and goes, oh, I'm a pussy, why are you walking away? You know, like calling him out like how guys do. Anyways, it should be smart to mention that everybody else was intoxicated, I was the only sober one, and he basically <laughs> rallies the this entire other group of guys to fight him, to come come fight me basically, saying that, standing in the middle of the street. Two of my friends keep walking off. Me and some of the other guys, we basically go get his back, but not get his back in the sense of we're about to fight 80, 40 dudes. I, I'm not exaggerating here. It was it was a five on 40, and we were I was not about to brawl any of these dudes. I mean, I got a 20 ACL, I can't even run away, bro. Hell no. Nah. Long story short, I'm pulling him out. He's all riled up and whatnot. And then my other friend gets into it with another kid, pull him out of there. First of all, nobody even fought, which was, all right. So it was just like a whole commotion for nothing. But it was just like, it really, it showed me how men's egos are insane. Like if you get a little bit of alcohol or any bit of drugs in your system, immediately you're on go mode with anybody for the slightest shit. He really did nothing. He, he, he called you a pussy. You know what I mean? If there's 40 of them and you know what? F fuck the number. If it was a two on two, I still would not want to fight anybody because forgiveness is probably the ultimate trait you can carry as a well-rounded man. If you're trying to build your character, the most important character trait that you can actually develop is forgiveness, or at least the discipline to know when somebody is not worth your time. You have to think about how much you have going for you, and it's hard to do so in the moment, especially if you're intoxicated, so I guess I can give him the benefit of the doubt, which is just another reason why you shouldn't be intoxicated. That's a whole nother rant. Even if you win the fight, you end up hurting them too much, maybe you go to jail, maybe you throw your life away, or if you lose the fight, then you know you lose a fight and you get the shit kicked out of you, that sucks, and then everybody's gonna make fun of you. It's just like fighting is an, it's a lose-lose situation no matter what. And the worst part is, is you think you're impressing your friends whenever you fight somebody, but in reality, if your friends are high quality men, which is who you should be surrounding yourself with, and those people will think less of you. Don't think, you know, oh, I'm standing on business because somebody said something mean to me and I'm not gonna let that shit slide. It's like, bro, let that shit slide. Like, think about it, and, and I mean, I deal with this shit every day. I check my DMs and I get, put your shirt on, fucking ugly kid, or, you know, that was, <laughs> that was a horrible and the most random made up example I could think of, but. I mean, I get a lot of hate in my comments every single day, so I guess I'm pretty used to letting this shit just rub off of me. I guess that's maybe where I have more experience than other people, but what I'm saying is, is like, if, if you are in person or online, you know, wherever you're beefing with somebody, bro, why are you ever wasting your time? Because you should never take criticism from somebody you wouldn't take advice from. That's what I told my friend, and I mean, hopefully it sticks with him. You're wasting your time if you're ever duking it out or, 
verbally spending energy towards something that will provide neither party benefit. You can't benefit from ever fighting somebody. And I, I got too much going for me. I hope you have too much going for you to the point where you don't need to fight anybody. The only instance that I could ever see somebody fighting somebody is if you're literally, you are back against the wall, you are defending somebody else who is getting the shit kicked out of them. Or, you know, you're defending your girlfriend or you're defending yourself when it's like you're getting jumped. That's the only time. If it's like a fair fight, you should not be fighting. Dead ass. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that. It's like, oh, but you need to be able to stand up for yourself as a man. And it's like, yeah, you should be able to control your emotions and understand your feelings towards one another and then be able to de-escalate any situation. And if you can't do that yet, then I don't think you're a real man. Anyways, I, I did not expect to be talking about this when I got in the car, but this is just some random shit that happened. So I thought you, have, you might find it interesting. With that being said, I'm gonna see y'all at the gym and with Evan. Even if it was a five on five, I still think that you shouldn't try to fight people, bro. Oh yeah, the best fight is the one you don't have to do, for sure, but. What? <laughs> what? Throw it on a shirt, bro. <laughs> We're hitting back, back and abs. We'll do thickness and woods. What? I already have both. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll see y'all in there. This is the moment we waited for. Everything you want is right here. We gon' give them what they came for. We gon' take it up from last year. Shoot them a shot while I'm long range. Me and the team on the same plane. Stay down, never switch off. You'll notice I go really slow and controlled on the eccentric for these. I like to really feel the tension in my lats build up on the eccentric. And I feel that if I stop just a smidge shy of that full range of motion, I actually can keep tension on my lats a lot better. So you'll see when I do the movement, I'm not pulling all the way down below my chin and I'm also not releasing to the point where my lats disengage. I'm always keeping them retracted and I always stop right around here. So yes, technically there is, it is a slightly smaller range of motion, but I feel that it's more beneficial because you're keeping constant mechanical tension on your lats the entire time. Pro tip, get a gym partner to help you go past failure on sets here and there. Going past failure where somebody actually assists you to get forced reps is, in my opinion, I like it better than drop sets, supersets, rest pauses, partial reps, anything. That, Cause you're getting that full range of motion and you don't have to stop in between a set to go past failure, you just go right back into it. Just make sure if you're progressive overloading, you're not actually counting the forced reps. Like I'm not gonna say I got nine reps there just cause Evan helped me get one. I'm still saying I got eight cause I would've failed on the ninth. Get a gym partner so you can take cute selfies yeah. in the mirror. Yeah, what are that? Pro tip, find friends. Next exercise. All right, single arm, dumbbell rows. These are great for the lats. You get a crazy stretch if you get the entire range of motion. Contrary to the last exercise, it's actually all right to use a little bit of momentum with these. In fact, if you go too strict and control it on the eccentric, like let's say you do a two second plus long eccentric, you're actually gonna take a lot of the tension off your lat and place it onto your bicep and your forearm, just trying to control the weight. So instead, you'll see that I use a pretty consistent repetition tempo where I'm doing about a one second eccentric and around a one to maybe one and a half second eccentric. It's very, it's a lot faster than my usual lifts. <laughs> Take five seconds to switch sides. <laughs> Since I do a little bit of a higher rep range, I think I got 12 on each side. I don't go completely to failure because it's really hard to take this exercise completely to failure without slacking on your form a good amount. The stimulus to fatigue ratio isn't really good if you go anything past one RIR or even especially zero RIR. So just don't go completely to failure. Oh. 
One of the things also that's really important with this is make sure you're holding the dumbbell at the very top. You can put the majority of the weight into your first three fingers. And when you do that a lot of the times, you're not gonna have any grip strength problems. You'll see I don't even really wrap my thumb around when I hold the dumbbell. I'm not a big connoisseur of wrist wraps just because I feel like it takes away you developing your forearms because secondarily you work them so much during back days. Why are you focusing the camera over here? Push past all the pain that you're going through. It won't last if you move how you wanna move. Get lost in the work that you gotta do to be someone better. You can grow into something new. I can be anything that I set my mind to. Why do what I need? I can push right through. Fight through those things that are holding me back from the. Would you, would you rather be five three but with an eight incher? Or... Fuck, bro. No. Bro. <laughs> Did you say yeah? Did you just whisper yeah to yourself while you looking in the mirror? <laughs> I thought I was a douchebag. All right, now I gotta take out the foam cover for your audience. Can you put like a slow motion too? Oh, I remember when I was in eighth grade. All right, so to do these not like an idiot, you want to use the D handle because it better aligns for your lat. Just kidding. Honestly, the way that he was doing was fine. It's just my personal preference. I mean, you're gonna have a sparring session. Bet, bro. You need headgear. I don't. Yeah. All right, buddy. I'm going straight for the ACO, bro. <laughs> bro, too tired to even think of anything. I got a cut brain. I'll kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best I could come up with. Whichever side you're biasing, make sure you lean to that side and then pull your shirt down to let everybody know which muscle group you're working. If you don't let the camera know what you're doing, are you even working? You want to keep your arms super tight to your body too. That'll better bias your lat. So that was a force rep that you just saw at the end of that. Basically, you go to failure, use your other hand to assist yourself during the concentric, and then just, just control the eccentric back to the starting position. It's a little extra stimulus, and the fatigue ratio is pretty good. You don't actually get much more tired doing it. a moaning channel at this point. Someone should re-upload these on Pornhub. Comment below if you want, no, just <laughs> Yeah, comment below if you want Dirk to make the OnlyFans. Bro, just literally look into any of my comment section on IG or TikTok, you'll get a quick answer to that, bro. It's ridiculous, bro. It's pretty ridiculous. Love. <sighs> yeah. It's back day, but we're just flexing arms. when you do this, it really doesn't matter whether or not you choose to stay really strict and not move your upper body at all, or if you choose to use a little bit of momentum where you lean forward on the eccentric and then lean backwards on the concentric. No matter what you do, just make sure that your momentum isn't too much. You don't want to just be you know, going really fast and hucking the weight back to you. That's not gonna activate your back as much, but if you choose to you know, go forward, if you choose to rock a little bit or stay super strict, just make sure that every repetition looks the same. So you shouldn't be super strict for some reps and then rock back and forth for others. It'll make it too hard to count how many you're doing. Dude, I don't think you can actually be fully locked in if you have a girlfriend. Hey, here we go. No, I know you're laughing, but here we go. A huge chunk of your day, even if you're not like directly spending it on her, you allot so much mental energy towards her. You know what I mean? Like you're thinking about her. Even if you're not worrying about her, you're still thinking about her. And that's time that could be spent thinking about the gym. Don't take love advice from Dirk. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't take love advice from me, but I mean, if you're not at or getting close to where you want to be in life, I feel like a lot of the times having a significant relationship, and this is just real shit advice, it, it is gonna slow you down, bro. Unless that she's also invested in your business or has is super goal oriented like yourself, then bro, most of the time you're gonna just get slowed down. Wouldn't the right person though be invested in you as well? Like most definitely. Goal? Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. But that's not gonna get you close to your goal. She's like some daddy's girl spending money, like blah, 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 just going through college and you have goals and you're trying to get somewhere, then yeah, I completely agree. But if you have two people who are both driven, I, feel like I kind still of don't think on so, bro. Each other. Because a lot of the times you're not driven towards the exact same thing. All right, you keep yapping. All right, I will keep yapping. I 
I know how to do this. He's just teaching me for educational purposes. So he doesn't know how to do this exercise, so I'm gonna teach him how to do it. You can either grab the top if it feels all right, but if it feels like it's too far off, then I usually hold it on the sides and put my elbows on the pads. And then all you're doing is manually flex your lats right now, like squeeze them and then pull down as fast as you can. I think you should put your elbows inside more and then hold it barely like with your hands out like that. And then come straight down and pull down fast. Yes, just like that. And then manually flex the lats on the way up. I almost got smacked like that. Ooh, that does feel kind of nice. Right, it's crazy. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll push through my feet and lift my butt up so I'm pushing myself a little bit more into the seat. I choose to go for higher repetitions with these and just focus a lot on the mind-muscle connection that I have rather than focusing on going really heavy. And I highly recommend you do the same if you're lucky enough to have this machine in your gym, which most people don't. You should order an angel shot, bro. An angel what? You know what an angel shot is? Bro, so yesterday. There was, was a whole story behind this? All right, can we just like put the two times speed on him talking? I was at General Ben's. <laughs> All right, we're moving on to abs. Why don't you get a couple extra reps in for the viewers <laughs> at home? <laughs> <laughs> two sets. Anything more than that and you're playing with it. When you're using the urinal and it's like any, two shakes, anything after that you're playing with it. What's wrong with playing with it? y'all are starting to notice a drop off on energy as the vlog kind of progresses. Sorry about that, but that's kind of just what happens when you're in a cut and you're trying to finish a workout. Whenever I vlog, it adds like 30, 45 minutes, especially if it's a two person workout onto my workout session total time length. So I appreciate y'all bearing with me. Also, let me know if you like longer or shorter videos. That actually really helped me out. If you could let me know if, comment down below if you like the 20 minute plus videos or if you like it between 10, 20 minutes. I usually find that that's kind of like a sweet spot for me. Anything after that, usually I kind of lose engagement on my videos. People click off. If you guys like them or if you like more yapping, you like more lifting, let me know. That's a wrap on this one. All right, so that's gonna put a wrap on today's uh, workout. I hope you all enjoyed. It was a good workout. You got any final notes? Subscribe. Cool, so uh, that's <laughs> gonna really throw a wrap on the Subscribe vlog. to Dirt Jermon. There we go. So if y'all are interested in coaching and you wanna get jacked and learn how to do it as a natural, Follow me on IG. So no, definitely don't. More followers than him. <laughs> Thank definitely you for having me back in the vlogs. <laughs> Dude, I'm someone gonna... actually comments and bring back <laughs> Evan and he needs his own vlogs. I appreciate y'all for watching. If you could take one second and like the video, it actually helps a lot with the algorithm and it incentivizes me to keep doing content. Stop that. I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, I hope you all have a great day. It's a great day to have a great day. Just like always, any day above ground is a good day. Bro, Final just, notes. Bro, just coded Pitbull, bro. <laughs> Is that what that is? Is that Yeah, have you ever heard Time of Our Lives by Pitbull? He's like, why do you know that like that? Why was that automatic? <laughs> Bro, I thought that was just a common quote. Every day above ground is a good day. I'm gonna pull up this shit. All right, before he pulls up that song, I'm gonna wrap this up. I appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all uh... next one. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> you, so you, had, you had to figure that out. Like, why was that automatic, bro? That's, just... that's a good song, bro. We're rapping this. We're rapping this, bro. That's so funny, bro.